Hey, welcome back to Mobility Wad with my boy, Brian McKenzie, talking about a concept we're seeing, wearing the rock and the Supple Legion shirt. I see you, I see you. So here's the deal, the murdered out Supple Leopard shirt. Here's what's going on. We see, <laughs> because Brian McKenzie has managed to murder out everything in his whole life. Including his arm. Oh, including his body, which is really hard to do, actually. <laughs> Teeth next. So here's what's going on. We have this concept we've developed called open torque or closed torque. One of the problems that we see regularly is that we've got athletes who can create torque off of a fixed object really well. So if he creates extra rotation torque, he can really screw in that shoulder into the sock. Come on, break, break the pull. Uh, there we go. Now, if I ask him to create the same amount of torque, the shoulder, go ahead. No, no, no. Create the same amount of torque. Create the same amount of torque. Not a lot of torque. So here's the problem, is that we work in sort of two planes. We work in this plane of having hands fixed on the ground, which allows me to create torque off of a closed surface, allows me to hide some of my problems, and also off of a barbell. So we see that athletes, both feet on the ground, can create torque off of fixed objects, fixed planes, fixed surface. But the second we remove that capacity to create torque off of a fixed object, the torque demand at the primary engine of the hip and shoulder goes through the roof. This is why we're seeing that athletes and coaches who uh, maybe aren't doing a lot of torque generation in their thinking, sometimes are spending more time doing single leg work because that single leg work is the expression of creating torque, an open torque environment. The torque is just uh, like this, right? It's off the single hip. So that's what's going on. So just to explain the differences, look, in this position, for example, Brian gets into a push up position. That's a regular push up position. Brian gets into a regular push-up position, we often find that athletes who are having shoulder problems or shoulder mechanic problems um, will often be able to kind of hide their dysfunction because they can create so much torque or relative torque off this fixed object or fixed surface, right? They can do things like have the shoulder back, they can be in kind of some wonky positions, they can even kind of hide these positions, hide these lack of torque. The second we put them on the rings, however, we end up putting those athletes into a, a, a situation, and this is why we like ring training and shoulder stability training, is that there is no way to hide this lack of shoulder stability. That now he's created the same relative torque, and as he becomes an advanced athlete, he can ultimately dissociate, keep torque here, and now bring the wrist in, but don't lose the torque here. Can you do that? Turn the wrist in without losing the torque? Oh, that's tricky, isn't it? Which is why the, the, all the high-level gymnasts do all this dissociation at the wrist. So when this look, it translates to the upper body, going hop up, we'll often see an athlete who can put a barbell over the head easily. Just put that up into a press. Put the barbell over the head in a press position. We can see rib cages down. He can pull the arm back, right? He can sort of high pull his little back a little further for me. Good armpit is forward. He can create that torque off of this fixed object. And Brian's a little tight today. Pull it back. Come on, son. There you go. Okay, now well, watch what happens as soon as we take his capacity to create torque away. Go ahead and grab this, Brian. No, we're not. You tell you. <laughs> so arm up. So in this position, we can now see what the true nature <laughs> of his shoulder is. <clears throat> is that full range of motion, he can't cheat off of that fixed object. He's struggling because full range of motion is actually all the way in here. So just hold that for me. That's normal. Got it? That's better. No, no, you're working again. The fully extra. Oh, come on, what's only what, what, How much is that one? What happened? Dude, that's, that's 20, 25 pounds. I understand. Yeah. So the, con the contest is, is that when we put dumbbells or kettlebells in athletes' hands, oftentimes we can start to see some of the fundamental breakdowns in our capacity. He's very strong, create torque off a fixed object. Off of a single object, we start to see more movement errors through range. So if he's snatching, he's got to be stable, also jump and start from a uh, stable position, right? And the dumbbell makes it a lot harder. So when we're assessing range of motion quickly with our athletes, it's our screen, we put two dumbbells in their hands, boom, and we can suddenly see if it is full range of motion. Now, one of the reasons we're bringing this up is right now we're engaged in a project working with San Jose State swim team, these girls, and one of the things that we kind of think about is what are the, the rigors of training? How do we teach torque? to our athletes, but at the same time, 
these are the how does it translate into the swimming world? We're trying to teach these stable swimming positions, and yet the swimming ends up being an open torque environment, right? Very open. Do we see athletes who have all kinds of stabilization problems in the water? Surgeries, things like that. Occur. Dude, swimming may be like the most dangerous sport I've ever seen, right? Next to running. Next to running, which is number one, which is also one of those situations where I'm also creating and stuck in an open torque environment. So if I'm not training or thinking about these demands, no wonder we start to see all kinds of craziness because that single leg has to, to, to weight bear and manage all the things. So this concept of open torque, closed torque gives us another way to sort of manage and, and evaluate some of the, the complexity. Obviously, you're not going to be able to handle as large loads, but it gives you one more way of kind of evaluating the stability of the shoulder and the stability of the hip in your athletes. Why we do so many step ups and step downs on the boxes, for example. Yeah? Yeah. Food for thought. Open torque, closed torque. See you guys tomorrow.